Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live with lots of extra music. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hi, everybody. <laughs> And our special guests this evening are Aaron Weiss and Stephanie Strickland from KGW News Channel 8. I think it was uh, Bix who was wondering which one of us is which. I'm Stephanie, that's Aaron. Just we, so we, we had a hard time figuring out, figuring yeah, out really. when they got here. Me too. I walked in and said, who am I? <sighs> so we were having a little problem with the streaming, but I think now we're here for the tech edition. Yes, it is the tech edition. Did I not say that? I don't know. It's the tech edition. We're just giddy to actually be on because yes. we there were there were issues. There were serious issues. You know issues. what? That's we. I'm happy with ten ish. <laughs> Interference. <laughs> Don't you wish that your show could work that way? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, seven ish. Seven, It'll come on when we're ready. You know. Well, we had one. And, day. Anne's package earlier this week yeah. was in fact seven ish and, and aired at Showed seven seven twenty. Seventeen. Seven seventeen. Those those three minutes. <laughs> what happened that day when we were on the show, and we had to go to like a. Five minute commercial break. Oh, the, the switcher died. A five minute commercial so break. So normally I would be we in hell. well. So normally <laughs> we start the show, you know, right Seamless. away seamlessly. You see yeah. me, I chat, and then we go right into the show. And we had some sort of colossal issue. And next thing you know, we're in five minutes of five commercial. Minute They're like, we don't know what we're gonna do. I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just talk. We'll see. Since this is a tech thing, so what happens? You've got a director who directs the 6 o'clock show, mm -hmm. and then a different director directs the 6.30, mm -hmm. and then the 6 o'clock director, Paul, comes back to do the 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Between each show, they reload the switcher, which is the machine that puts everything on TV. Correct. Because each of them has their own custom setup for the way they work. And for whatever reason that day, the switcher, when Paul goes into load in that three-minute break before the very end of the 6.30 in the top of our show, the switcher just pukes its guts yep, all over the place. Basically, nothing. We're like, we got nothing. Nothing, right? And <laughs> we get there, and Paul says, "Yeah, I got nothing." No and video, no stories, nothing. We come wow. back into black for like ten seconds, and Paul says, "I got nothing." So we roll the next break, and off yeah. we go. And eventually, it came back, kind of sorta, and and it worked. But yeah, that was a that was a mess. train wreck. <laughs> yeah, it was train, a train wreck. wreck. That was what, what that you was. You should just blame it on the streaming service. <laughs> If only they could do that, because we totally can't. It's all the streaming service's fault. That's right. The right. lateness, we're always ready promptly at 10 o'clock. <laughs> it's just sitting here patiently waiting. So we brought them here specifically to talk about what? Online? Well, I think their media, online presence. Old media? Which, yes, is a nice combination of old and new media. Right. And how did that come about? How did you guys come to be the Twitter show? Because you really, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Do you want to start? You go for it. Cause okay, because I, I have you've been an opinion. In here, you've been involved in the project longer than I have, so I'll let, I'll let you start. I think. Well, I mean, the, we knew that we wanted to use Twitter. Mm -hmm. Both Aaron and I like technology. He his level of understanding. You just did a blog posting on this. Um, I'm similar to you. I I love technology. Um, I don't always understand all the ins and outs of everything, yeah. but I totally enjoy it. He's the guy that I go to when I'm like, what does this mean? How does this work? Explain this stuff. So he's he's that guy. These are the people. Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I have a whole bunch of them, though. <laughs> it's nice. He knows everything. So it's, yeah. he's one-stop shopping for me. Yeah. So he's my, my tech Google, if you will. So I basically, we knew that we wanted to incorporate Twitter into the show because we both like social media and <laughs> thought it'd be great. But what took it in a whole new direction really quickly was messing around um, with Ignite 3. <laughs> four. When, when we did, was it Ignite 4? Ignite, Ignite, Ignite 4. When we went, um, as well, as you may or may not know, we did a live shot from there and Which I- Which was very courageous. Yes. It, it was our and first a week on the failure. show. <laughs> Considering the uh, personality and attitudes involved with uh, some of the people that you may have been filming that yeah. evening. I'm not nice, naming any names. Nice outfit, by the way. Thank you. I wore it just for you guys. She wore it that night. She looked fantastic in it. We made com you this made comments about your cleavage. It wasn't. I wasn't talking about my cleavage in the outfit. It just was part of the presentation. In the presentation. Yes. One of the slides. There was cleavage in the presentation. And then poor Wait. Joe Smith, yeah. our reporter, was just a little surprised to have <laughs> cleavage come up during a live shot. Yeah, blushed. Joe, 
<laughs> even, even underneath he, even on, yeah. the makeup that he has Joe, to wear, you blushing. could still... I was like, oh, <laughs> look what I've done. And then I was kind of proud of myself because, you know, yeah. You, you ruffle a newscaster and you're like, yeah. look what I did. <laughs> like, let's <laughs> try that some more. Fantastic. But in the end, though, in the end, it didn't, I mean, it was, we didn't do Ignite any any favors. We wanted to. So it was really a letdown to see all the. the I don't think you heard it, though. I don't, I don't think so either, but I think for the people who are there who are really invested in it, when you bother them to that extent that they write a, a posting about what a terrible job you did, <laughs> epic fail, I believe, was how Jeff put it. Um, <laughs> it, it bothers you because what you, it, when you went out with the intentions of doing yeah. something great, and then you're like, not only did we kind of blow it, but as far as these people are concerned, we should never be invited back again. Well, as a result, me responding to that post suddenly kicked off a flurry of conversation that then took on a life of its own on mm-hmm. Twitter. And actually, um, Verso was great because she was, and and also Rick. Uh, Rick. He was great too because they were um, not. I mean, they were they were really um, engaging about it. Like, mm-hmm. hey, don't you know? Don't sweat it. And I'm comfortable enough, and I've been in this role long enough to know, you know, how it goes and how people can respond and how candid they can be. But that that also helped kind of put our Twitter experience into warp drive. Yeah. It 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 put us on the map as far as the Portland tech community goes. That we're at least interested in paying attention even and making if, an effort. And making an effort, even if that first effort was <laughs> somewhat stumbling. Yeah. Uh, well, how often is a first effort in anything? Sure. Smooth. I mean. And, you know, and p- part of it was, I, you know, I, I'd booked Ignite Portland, sent emails off to, to uh, Jay Bancroft several weeks ahead of time because I mm-hmm. saw Ignite on the calendar and said, well, this is our first week. We know we want, we're doing the social media thing with the show. We should go. And then I, I blame myself for not briefing Joe Smith enough and really having him Grok what Ignite was. Oh, I tried Grok. a couple times. So many points for using Grok, Grok. on the show. <laughs> I saw it on a bumper sticker and I actually had to Google it and then I thought, that's <laughs> awesome, I'm using that. I'm using any man. Yeah. So, yeah, and so I, I blame myself for that, for not sitting down with Joe and having him you know, to understand wh- what Ignite was, why it's important, why it's important that, that we're there. And, you know, it, and it did, in fact, work out in the end. And, you know, I'm, Ignite 5, I'm sure, will be... A different experience altogether. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least I hope. Right. Well, we we talked about, um, you know, I I don't I think one of the reasons we're sitting here today is actually because of that. So everything kind of worked out the way it was supposed to. Yeah. Um. In in the end, but still, it wasn't very yeah. pretty at the time. <laughs> Didn't feel awesome. By any but it's stretch. kind of an organic growth, funny. right? You <laughs> yeah. you get out on the net, you know, you do something, people respond, and then you come back and. It's not unlike what's going on with that post that we were reading today, um, the, 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 the Tempest in the Teapot, uh, with the Ubuntu... Uh, oh, the, the, the Ubuntu story. Yeah. D- uh, WKOW in Madison did a story on a student who was going to a technical college, ordered her new laptop from Dell that she thought was going to match all the specs she needed to enroll in school, and got there and discovered her laptop came with Ubuntu on it instead of Windows. But she didn't even understand. I mean, she, she was at the point where she just assumed that when the computer turned on, it would look just like everything else that right. she's ever used in work. And she like called Dell, and Dell so. said, well, yeah, Ubuntu will do all of that for you. It's great. And she gets there, and she can't figure out why the Verizon install disk for her DSL doesn't work. And she can't use and Microsoft can't figure Word. Out why where's the, Microsoft, where's Word? Microsoft Word? Where is yeah. it? And there, she didn't have anyone there I'm, it, to, to show her, show to her open it. office or to yeah. show her that you don't need a Verizon install disk to make DSL work. And Wait, this so, was a young college kid. This is an eighteen-year-old going to a not wow. UW. Not like, everybody's tech savvy. Honey. Yeah, that's and no, I think and, that's and a really was, good she point. She's not in going this to UW Madison, where she had a big tech office willing to help. She was going to a technical college. Technical college. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so she rather than finding somehow a, a Madison Linux user group, she calls the ABC station and they're troubleshooters. And the, and the troubleshooters who don't aren't familiar who, with it either also, here, like she dropped out of school, her computer doesn't right, work. Right, she can't enroll in school, and Dell's not helping. And so they like, stepped in and, and they the stepped in and said, "Dell's going to help her, and the community college is going to let her enroll anyway." And when you know what, 
the right thing to have done would have been to, you know, hook her up with a, a Linux user group somewhere yeah. and who will just show her the ropes. So this story well, she's airs. she's not familiar with Ubuntu, then she's and, not familiar with the fact that it's right, Linux either, exactly. So. But neither is the TV station. And so this story airs, and I know that's who I call when I get tech support. I, right. I call, call KGW. The, you call KGW for tech support. <laughs> the front desk. <laughs> right. It's like is <laughs> Steph there? You, you, yes, you, Steph I can I, help. I can't boot my computer. You, you, and all I do is, and people call, and I go. <laughs> Hang on, let me open Google. Now right. let's decide on the keywords. You, you, you'd be surprised, do you, though. Do you have a Googling song? I have a song that I sing while I Google things. Yeah. So. Anyway, I the, won't sing it now. <laughs> save it, because you're going to have to at some point tonight. I want to hear it. The, Rick will have to plug his ears. He doesn't okay. like it when I sing it. The right. tail end oh, of the Aaron, Madison story, it, it, real quick, it gets slash dotted. And this poor station, Madison, is now getting hate mail from well, I mean, the just slash daughters. Flamage. And I think it got boing boinged as well. So 120,000 hits, which WKW has never seen, and they're getting nasty phone calls. And this poor I mean, really, student like, is getting the top. really nasty phone calls. Really, I mean, and so WKW does a oh, we discovered Ubuntu, and you know, please stop harassing please us. Please understand, so all this we poor were girl. To do was help. We were trying to help. <laughs> but the point is, is you just when you were talking to to Mike that not everyone is tech savvy so in our show we have this we have kind of two audiences on any night you've got forty thousand people watching mm -hmm. of which about 700 or so somewhere between six and 700 are probably i mean they're they're on twitter they're um you know tech savvy and then you have the whole rest of the audience and how do you balance a show that is interesting for people who don't really care to know what twitter is Correct. and and i think easy for me to say sitting in the seat that I do but I, I think we've done it I think there's enough content in the show itself that people who are not interested in some of the in social media and some of the other mm -hmm. aspects can find content in it that's good for them but I think I think we're also engaging enough that people on Twitter well, like you do, to be you do a segment you do a segment around the web is that yep. what it's called yeah, yeah. right it's, it's, yeah you just go out there and and kind of it's the, the the three or four top stories articles stories not necessarily the top but the ones I found most interesting. What's today. your criteria? Is it you? <laughs> Do you me. pick it? I, I I go through. Well, and then Steph will send stuff too. And but he but but to his credit, um, he may be the gatekeeper on that because he finds it. But the the you can tell when when I Twitter when I tweet and say that producer Aaron's not here today, and someone else is filling in. Watch the content of something like the Web Watch, and you will pick up if you watch the show enough you'll see the difference and to, to Aaron's credit he does a tremendous job I mean he looks everywhere for these stories it's not like he just picks the three top things in Google Trends and he's out of there I mean he looks and so as a result I always find something that I like reading as an anchor that I didn't know about before you know what I'm saying well so you're following Twitter too and you're getting these links and people are going hey did you see that because the news is hitting I mean the first time we the heard weather. about Steve Jobs yeah this yes. week yep was right mm-hmm was a Josh Bancroft Twitter, yeah. and mm -hmm. people were like, "Where, where is it on the web?" It's well, like it's on Twitter. It's on. We're finding Plain it. We're digging crash it up. Tweet guy Jay Crum Crumbs was. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name. Yeah. I'm working off Giannis. memory. Giannis, 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 Giannis Crumbs. Crumbs. Um, that, that was. A, I mean, Twitter had. I mean, that was amazing. What happened with that whole mm -hmm. story? And the whole storm. Um, <laughs> it broke. The, the whole storm, storm tracking storm, and the storm yeah. team. Yeah. That's where PDX uh, TST. TST. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think that was my first hashtag. We yeah. were, I was finally, was I was waiting and I was holding off just trying to decide what, and then I was like, yeah, that's good enough. That'll work. Yeah. I wonder what my first hashtag was. I just try to make the longest ones possible. Yeah, your hashtags are, like give hashtagging a bad like name. Like approximation of Broca in a tweet. Oh, here we yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'll save it for after hours. All right. You, you're a bad, bad hashtagger. So how long, how long have you... Been on because Twitter. you've got a few accounts. Um, you, you both have individual accounts, and then you've got the Live at Seven account. So is the Live at Seven and then the News the, Channel Eight you, account? Yeah. Do you post from the Live at Seven while you're while I'm at, at work? While I'm at work, I'll post from the, the Square account mm -hmm. and, and fill in producers and when fill he's in not producers there, when, when I'm not there. there. We'll we'll, we'll tweet take from that there. tweet from there. So that's the whatever's happening on the show today and whatever other interesting things we're finding at work account. Mm -hmm. My personal Twitter, I. I, for a while, I was just mainly using as a really easy way to update my Facebook status because most of the folks who are following me online are college friends who are on Facebook, but it's a heck of a lot easier to update Twitter from everywhere than it is anything yeah. else. Um, so and I, I guess I've been on there for yeah, probably about a year, year and a half, um, but, not, but not doing much with it. Yeah. So. I got into Twitter. I was interested in Twitter when Deuce... 
at mm-hmm. deuce.com started and Heather started talking about Twitter. And I went, Twitter, what is this? Because I think she's totally awesome. So I was like, well, if she thinks it's awesome, so do I. Because I'm a follower. <laughs> Sign me up. And But it was really the show that then got me, okay, I need to sit down and do this and, and make this work. What's interesting to me is when I try to explain it to people. Like you like you guys, like people will write in, it, will, t- will tweet me. And they'll be like, hey, get Matt Safino on it. Get Dave Seleski on it. Get so-and-so on it. They and they just don't get it. And I, and I can take... I can try to like even show them the enthusiasm mm-hmm. and I just see them go, no. And so I don't push it because I don't want someone at our station to get involved with Twitter unless they really want to do it right. Correct. Because there's an expectation when you get involved in that, that you will be interactive. And I love that. I have like, I mean, I have so many updates already and I haven't been really tweeting that long. And it's because I'm cons. I reply to everyone. Yeah. I would- Can someone look and see how many updates I have? Because it's like it's, thirty thousand. It's like Twitter horish. No. <laughs> no. I work it's in really bursts. Bad. It's bad That'd when you close. go like page down, page down, page down, and it's all you, 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 you. <laughs> there, me. there are times like every once in a while. I think in the morning, I wake oh, wait, up. She's pulling it up. Oh, there it is. The magic Amazing. number. Eight thousand three hundred and thirty-eight. Oh, very, good. very nice. <laughs> And I've got three quarters of those. I should not be proud of that, but I'm. Three quarters of those are between you and Miss Burroughs talking about panties or something. Nice. Oh, oh wait, we're we, not in after hours yet. We, are yeah, we? yeah, we go in spurts. I'm gonna guess eighteen hundred for me. How many? Oh, that's me. Oh, oh, that's you. Verso 11, has eleven thousand. Eleven thousand four hundred fifty-six. Okay. Where, where am I? I'm curious. Yes, um, we we actually are joined in studio audience not only by Verso but by her lovely husband as well, that's and right. he says she tweets a lot. <laughs> my husband says the same thing he's like what are you doing is are you think, on twitter yeah there we go 1900 oh, nice. Nice. nice um i think you know i mean we always tend on this show and in, in like blogging and we always tend to like do all this twitter love you know like oh twitter this twitter this and people who are not using it are like what in the hell is this amway or something you know <laughs> you just like it's like well you just are, have are to get paying? involved You'll understand, you know. I tried to get my parents but on Twitter. Where it struck my, me. My mom, is, my mom is on Twitter. My, there you go. My is? parents both have blogs, but they won't get on Twitter. But my mom is on. I don't think she's actually tweeted, but she's following she's me lurking. and the show and, and, and my little brother. She's not following me, though. I'm totally hurt. <laughs> Next time I see her, I'll we'll, we'll like, get there. Cool. <laughs> I just think with tech support and also with the news um especially these news breaking news items that are now hitting twitter before you see them anywhere else the, yeah. the two i remember from um last year are the china earthquake mm-hmm. yeah which didn't hit the websites i mean it happened overnight mm-hmm. in the u.s but um we were getting direct reports of on the ground of what was really happening who in, was it that told me know? all twitterers are insomniacs was that you yeah. <laughs> someone said it i, I don't I think could... it was me but it sounds like the kind of thing i'd say i can't tell you how many times yeah. that I, mike has woken up like in the modern, morning um, and said please don't yell at me when you look at my twitter stream <laughs> and i look at it and he's like oh, i was up till 3 30 in the morning well, look, it, exactly. but that's a day job <laughs> it can happen someplace else in a different time zone but someone's yeah. here is up exactly and, yeah. and then there's someone up here who's retweeting it you yeah, know right, robert totally. scoble or something going my god there's a huge earthquake in China right now. Right. I was one- more than the modern teletype. It, it's it's the modern crowdsourced AP wire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. With with a speed that that even AP can't match. Right. And it's not exclusive. It's not you know, it's not a private thing. Anybody can be a part of it, right. which makes as it- soon as I say that to people too who are unfamiliar with it. They go, oh, I don't like the sound of that at all. Yeah. I went, well, you're in control of what you say. It's I mean, a cult. <laughs> Come join I've had, us. I've had friends that have, like, get on and they follow me and like maybe three other people. And they're right. like, I just don't understand why it's fascinating. Have, like, have you guys been <laughs> on long enough well. to get the secret handshake? Did no, you get the? Oh, I don't, okay. I, I, yeah. I think maybe you'll get the secret handshake after. End of the night. I think yes. it's. I think we hit two thousand yeah. tweets. Oh, there I'm you close. Go. Yeah. I'll, I'll have that by Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you worked really hard, you could have it by the end of the weekend. <laughs> I'll be there, just going like mad. So you guys, you know, are doing a ton of stuff with social media, and kudos to you because Thanks. I mean I think that that's that's what's happening. You're also doing the live streaming. Yeah. And then doing the in between segments. And do you get credit for I that? Like. Was that your yeah. idea? I think Paul gets credit for originating Director that. Paul Director Paul Kenny. Director Paul Kenny, who who for years had talked about the, the KGW Gold package, where not only would you would you get breaks during, you know, audio during the breaks, but we'd open up uh, BPL 
and you would hear the, the director audio and, and all the swearing that goes on. <laughs> yeah, not when, a good We don't hear that. When, we don't no, hear you. No. When it, you know, when, and we're working, we're working yeah. on that. Yeah. Still, we've been that working on that for, for three months. And yeah. it, it's one of those things that is a, a, a high priority for us and for the rest of the engineering staff who are trying to actually you know build us a studio to work in. It's a little yeah. bit lower. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I so I, I, can only, I can only push that one so, so hard. That's okay. You just tell everybody she's got voices in her head. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Talking to herself. Producer Aaron just told me this. And exactly. I'm like, sure he did. <laughs> Okay. I, I don't even have the God Box button. Paul has that. Yeah. And I, I don't even have. We call the, it the God Box when you know it's Paul can jump and you hear it. Yeah. yeah, it comes over all the speakers. And I, I don't even have that button, but I, can, I want one of those. So, but I want it for the, <laughs> just for the house. Your life. Oh, nice. <laughs> no. Everybody, my child will not go to bed. I think my brain is falling out. <laughs> So That's this, what Twitter is to me. Twitter's like the God is the God button. box. It's yeah. like, oh. So the online version is the gold version. Basically, it, it yeah. Is now. Because yeah. I get and, 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 I get to see the cuts. I don't have to sit through <coughs> no, commercials. I don't. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Careful who you, you tell Yeah, that exactly, right. exactly. <laughs> Who's going to get that yeah. secret? Well, you know what? I mean, let's be candidly, it's worth it to discuss here. Absolutely. There may come a point in time when people watching online won't get to see what goes on in the breaks because there will be money to be made in running. How, how you how you yeah. monetize that is a whole different, but whole other it, it could happen. Well, actually, I mean, that's the people actually, who are watching on the stream right now, sure. on, on the podcast, the streaming services, obviously oh, we, yeah. we use this for free. They're getting pop-up ads mm -hmm. as we're talking right now. So it's part of it down, the... But it's part of the stream, and it's inserted in the stream. So there is technology out there where you could still watch the content, but you're getting a little, a little lower did, third that's right. popping up saying. Did, right. did I know. CC you on my Mogulus email about a month ago? Yes. Okay. You so did. you know that's one of those things that eventually will come down the pipe mm -hmm. to us. Mogulus has a has a, a white label yes, version, and do. at some point, you know, you pay them, and then you sell the ads, and you get the money, and mm -hmm. that is where this is going eventually for online streaming. And so, whatever we have online that the revenue comes in from you know from the little the little pop-up ads and but in the meantime the it's fun and, it is yeah. i like i mean the, the stuff that goes on in the breaks is mm -hmm. is great because he'll tell me in my ear because i don't have a computer on the set and my phone obviously will mess up the mic so i have i can't bring a phone out with me now so that's he'll tell change, me yeah, right? we, we about hope the new set. we hope right it, i want I, the the thing is is sometimes it's design, it, you know, it, it's um, design for form TV over and not functionality. Mm -hmm. And so you get out there and the computer is at a weird angle and it's hard to use and hard to use quickly. What I really need is, you know, a netbook or something that is easy for me to use, easy for me to, um, you know, ha to sort of be wired into and then ready to go. But I just, I, I, I'll be interested to see how it looks when I actually get out there, I guess is the, the short answer to what, that question. What's the ETA on the new uh, studio? Week, uh, a matter what? of weeks. Yeah, I mean they're wow. they're there's, talking there's, rehearsals yeah. and wow. There, there's there's not there. a firm launch date, I think, because they're not actually our engineers aren't moving stuff in, mm -hmm. um, and they don't want to start another countdown clock while the DTV countdown is still going. Yeah. So at, at some point, shortly after the DTV transition, assuming the DTV transition happens and doesn't get delayed till June, yeah, uh, you should see a studio on the square countdown so appear at some point after that. For anyone who doesn't know. Tell them why the show is called The Square. So the, the show title, the original intent was that the show was going to be called The Square Live at 7. Right. And Hence Pioneer Courthouse Square, <coughs> studios there at The Square. And it was going to be the, the flagship show for the new studio down there. But and then things didn't work out so well. The studio got delayed by a little bit, but <laughs> we still had to get a TV show on the air. So we're like, what the heck do we call it? And because the, the political newscast was ending mm -hmm. when the elections were over. It, it lasted a little bit well, after that's, that. And that's then that was the, the how timeline now makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so we then, had, we had so then it was like, well, now what? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we'll just put her in the studio and we'll just try to try to make it look a little different. And then hopefully the square will be ready to go sometime six months after that. Because it's very the news meets the Tonight Show kind of feel. Yeah. yeah. It, it feels different than anything else. Certainly that it's that, fun to that do. We're doing. Oh, it's a blast. I've worked yeah. every job in the in the business. I have used to shoot. I used to edit. I've, I've done everything and this i love what i'm doing now i just want to be doing it in three years i don't want him to leave i mean i have <laughs> demands like i'm like you know it's working well just the way it is and i know that all good things do not last forever especially in our business but mm -hmm. boy do i hope this stays just the way it is and that he doesn't get that job playing piano for some broadway show or really yeah was it yeah the I, billy joel tunes yeah, yeah, you were talking joel. about that between 
the, in, in the, the show tonight. today. Is that where? Yeah. yeah, I was like, I think, did I hear that or did I read it? Now that's I the interesting remember. thing because you've got that extra piece of content where people will ask or email mm-hmm. or whatever, and you're like, did we say that on the show or was yeah. that uh, during the in between? Because sometimes or? I can't, I can't. To me, it all kind of blends together. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is. It's the first time I think anyone's doing TV with a back channel. Mm-hmm. Some people don't like, like it. I mean, we it, the the media insiders. You know, a little snarky about it, like, oh, that's why just, that. Well, you know what? Well, it's like anything else. It's just it's how it is. Fucking the trend. It's just how yeah. it is. There, really? there's, there's a very funny post on on OMI from about two weeks, three weeks into the For show. For a while, he knew I was pregnant right away, and I couldn't, I couldn't go to OMI because normally you can say whatever uh. you want about me, and it does not phase me i've got the thickest skin you know mm-hmm. i share on on twitter i actually share some of the emails i get in mm-hmm. short 140 character bursts but you get the the gist yeah but i got to a point where i just told aaron i was like i'm too hormonal to like go look at that stuff so just let me know when there's something worthwhile yeah but you know don't tell me about the personal stuff and i think that's when you found that well yeah i mean there there was a post that i don't even think lynn made the original post it was it was someone else who front paged it and it, you know as with OMI posts, a bunch of people come on and, and whine about what you're doing and telling you why it's terrible. And right. you, know, I, I, you have to have a thick skin right. in this business and realize that there are all sorts of reasons, legitimate or otherwise, that people will rip you to shreds. Right. Yeah. And you know, I, that's how it is. And you know, you know, you're you you know, you kind of have a gut instinct when you're not doing something right or when it's not working. And so when people are on their like you know telling you you're doing it wrong and you know you're doing it right then Mm -hmm. part of me that the 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 part of me when i'm not hormonal is like bring it on tell me more because i i know i am i know we are doing it right you know so it's interesting i just hope you don't ever get so mad that you you know dump a large glass of ice water on your head or something (laughs) (laughs) not that i know that anyone would have done that when she was pregnant or anything. Tell me that story. <laughs> Wait, we have to save that one too for after hours. Is that after hours too? <laughs> there That's you a go. lovely yeah. story. <laughs> lovely story about what pregnancy hormones can do to an otherwise usually rational girl. I've been okay. It's been good. <laughs> I haven't been too nutty, but I've just also really keyed into the fact that things, like when something gets on my nerves, I'm like, eh, I'm just not going to go there. But think, I've been very fortunate. I think you guys are doing a great job. And I think that part of the thing is when you're doing a great job and you're doing something that hasn't been done before, people are going to get pissed off about it. And that's almost how you know you're doing it right. Yeah. Well, you're doing yeah, a better. Absolutely. You know, you're doing a better job at it in broadcast media than print media right now. That's if you right. Look at, you print know, it's, it's kind a of this time big survival against the internet, and we've had like um, um, Steve Woodward, who was a former reporter for the Oregonian yep. here, yep. and mm-hmm. talking about what he saw the future of print media was, and it was bleak. And then if you see what's <laughs> happened in the last six months, in the last week at the PI, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think his best quotable comment was, uh, do you guys want to buy a paper? Because yeah. <laughs> I can show you a few you guys could probably just buy if you wanted to. You know, uh, um, I think it seems like broadcast media has a little easier entree well, into I, the online world. It's or is it just a different time with video and mm-hmm. social networking? The or? financial pressures hit print so much faster because print was so dependent on classifieds. Mm-hmm. Yes, and exactly. They had no idea what the to Craig do with list Craigslist effect. And basically. Craigslist yeah. was and was the beginning of the end for print and mm-hmm. it T V did not have that revenue stream that we were dependent on. So it's still that, coming it's for still us. Coming it's still coming for us. It's away at all of us right now. It mm-hmm. really yeah. is. But, but it, in a different way. Right. In a different way. So it didn't hit us in broadcasting as as quickly as it hit uh, as it hit print, add on to that that print's higher overhead cost, just printing, newsprint costs went through the roof. Yeah. And on top of that, dis- declining subscription levels, and it, it just happened sooner for them. It It is happening to TV this year. Mm-hmm. Um, it will continue to happen. I mean, we're very fortunate to be at a station that is, in, with a station group that is in better shape financially to weather at least 2009, than than a whole lot of the industry right now, um, but it's it's going to get. But it's not a rosy very picture ugly. even. For oh no, yeah, no it, it's going to get very ugly this year. And I mean the all the Gannett papers, uh, Statesman Journal, mm-hmm. every one of that paper is being forced to take an unpaid week in the first quarter of this year, um, just to try and shore up yep. shore up revenues. 
Um, the Tucson paper that Gannett owns, they're about to shut down, the Tucson Citizen. That's where I'm from, so I kind of pay attention to yeah. those things. It, it's it's going to be ugly for print and, and ugly for broadcast this year. And I think for broadcast, too, I think that the nature of how people get their news is going to continue to change. And so for me, the more diversified I can be, the, the better understanding yeah. I have of, ev of sort of everything, how it works, um, if something as simple as uh, blogging, um, which for us is just, I mean, sort of, it's, it's, it requires no explanation, but I still get emails from people who are like, I've never, I've never done a blog before. And what they're mm -hmm. sending me is an email, but they think because they read the blog that now they're blogging. And anyway, yeah. the point being that there's um, even something as simple as that. I want to have my hands in as many aspects of what's coming, so to speak, as I can for job security, because yeah. I don't know that this broadcast model, the way we're doing it now, will continue to survive 20 years from oh, now. Oh, it won't. No. And, <laughs> and, and, and you, you see that, you know, I'm treading on, tread carefully here, but it, the union issues that a lot of shops are seeing right now um, make it, you know, you see, oh, there's a, a degree of who moved my cheese, but also a degree of is my, <laughs> is my job going to exist a year from now, two years from now, um, because of the technological changes that are coming around the corner yeah. well, or are already here. So do you see, you know, talent, reporters, anchors? I hate that word. I always have <laughs> I know, I'm right. sorry. Talent, right? Like, I couldn't, I, I, but that's, I couldn't I think of the, but, you, yeah. you, you know, the, the, yeah. the people, producers, your folks, the people yeah. who do your role, um, like the news media, news reporters, eventually moving into blogs and things like that away from, because you, you have this infrastructure in broadcast right. that is almost an immovable mountain but then you've got this infrastructure next door here, um, people sitting in their basement with microphones, mm -hmm. right. yep. streaming live over the internet to anyone who cares, um, and the distribution network of iTunes or, you know, I RSS think, and blogs. I, think the point I mean, though, do you so see that no. moving that way? I, I don't or? think it's moving away from, it's moving in addition to. Right. I think that yeah. the, the main theme and the thing that pulls them together is that there's always going to be someone sitting in front of a camera talking. With right. a microphone. And and while we're not always going to have the actual, like, you know, dead tree print, mm -hmm. you're always going to have, in whatever form it takes, someone talking to well, a camera. The reason I bring it up is because the technology people, you know, we just see a new service, a new technology, and you implement it, and it's just kind of free and easy. I mean, free, so to speak, right? right. But it's, it's, you know, RSS, the fact you can blog every day and just syndicate it yourself yeah. for example um those are the things that that always strikes people in technology with broadcast folks it's like well why don't you just do this or for five thousand dollars you can do this and this and this and you're good to go you know and you've got this overhead of this old you know the the, the broadcast business i mean the airwaves have to cost enough money and the digital transition has to cost you enough money to and, and the, you need the ad revenue to support it exactly and, and, i mean and not a lot of folks are thinking about the commercials they're going to run right now. And, I mean, they're thinking about keeping their businesses afloat. Yeah. What well, goes first? Advertising. Which is funny because you need it. You to need it to it. sustain. It's, what do you do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it, it's the first thing to go. And, no, it, it's true. The, the money that it takes to, to run a TV station, to build a studio in downtown Portland, <laughs> is, you know, orders of magnitude different from the technology it takes to to run a podcast at, out of someone's basement. Um, and, you know, you, you build the studio with the anticipation that that revenue will still be there down the road. Mm -hmm. And at least for the moment in TV, it is still. The, the challenge is knowing that it's not going away entirely, but shifting online, where is that revenue going to start coming from online? And That's the, the broadcast question. industry as a whole has not figured that out yet. Yeah. Uh, for uh, a lot of reasons. I mean, a lot of folks get their newspaper online mm -hmm. now. They don't have it delivered anymore because you can get this, generally speaking, the same content for free online. So why only more updated? Only more mm -hmm. updated. So why pay to have it delivered? I think the same thing. It wouldn't surprise me if there's 
they you know does that mean that we will st soon start seeing and i know that the models have failed in the past when they've tried this to take a newspaper online version and, and charge a, a fee for the service as a general rule of thumb it doesn't work yeah. because you can get the information elsewhere for free unless you're the wall street journal unless well <laughs> but you know i mean when as a general rule of thumb it's just not going to work and yeah. i wonder if that is going to be attempted in the broadcast business with online content that becomes sort of a content you pay for as be it through watching ads, whatever the case may be, to try to get some money back out of that. Because the web, you know, web content for TV stations in general isn't hugely profitable. Oh, not at all. I, I, I don't know of, I, I certainly haven't heard of any TV stations that are actually turning a, a profit with their, you know, with their websites. It, it's supplemental and it adds to, it's another place you go and you keep the TV station front of mind and you provide good information. Um, but I, certainly haven't heard of any that are actually turning a full profit just based on their, that could continue operating with only a website and not a TV product. Right. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's just not the same. It's not what they do. It's a, it's a byproduct of it. It's a useful tool for the people who use the internet, but. And on that happy note. On that very happy <laughs> note. Well, I'll be well, out of a job. <laughs> was that a half years. hour already? Awesome. Wow. Yeah, I'll we'll be sitting in our basement <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> complaining um thank you for joining us for the tech edition of strange love live please join us next week when we talk to uh, beer and blogs justin kistner and if you have a chance go to dayon.org if you uh, have any way is that the right I, th yeah. I think so yeah. yeah i think it is um uh if you have a day off on monday and you're in the tech field you can find information there on how you can to help can give a day back to help nonprofit organizations we'll talk a little bit more about that in after hours Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thanks and for joining us, guys. We'll be back for After Hours. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>